The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, Inspired by the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 25. God had promised David would be king, but for now, King Saul ruled Israel. David lived his life on the run, followed by a group of misfits who had become friends and servants. One day, they arrived in the desert of Paran, near the land of a wealthy man named Nabal, who owned 3,000 sheep. We'll set up camp here, man. At first, naval servants didn't know what to think. Too many strangers around these parts. We've had food and sheep go missing. But David's men were honorable. They didn't try to steal from the shepherds. In fact, David protected Nabal's shepherds from any harm. Stay as long as you like, my friend. About time for sheep shearing, isn't it? Oh, yes. Nabal will hold a grand feast when it's all over. Your men have helped us, so they should share in the celebration. David called for 10 of his men and gave them a message to send to Nabal. On it. David's messengers hurried up the mountain to Nabal's estate and were brought to stand before him. Well, what do you want? <clears throat> Nabal sneered down at the men while he continued to chew on a fine leg of mutton. David says, may you live long, may things go well with you. <laughs> Continue. Uh, he says, I hear that you are clipping the wool off your sheep. When your shepherds were with us, we treated them well and protected them. Now please be kind to my men. Please give us any food you can find for us. Nabal leapt from his seat and hurled the mutton bone across the room. Who is this David? Probably a runaway servant. Why should I give bread and meat to a nobody? And his men who come from who knows where. David's men returned to camp and delivered the news. Oh, no, he didn't. Oh, yes, he did. Men, put on your swords. We'll make Nabal wish he hadn't. At no time at all, David and 400 of his men were marching up the mountain to confront Nabal. It seemed there was no stopping a battle. But Nabal's wife, Abigail, was far wiser than her husband. A servant told her what he had done. David sent messengers asking for food, but Nabal shouted and was rude to them. Go on. The whole time we were near them, David's men were good to us. They, they were like a wall keeping us safe. You've got to do something now or terrible trouble will come. There's no time to waste. Abigail quickly directed her servants to gather supplies and put them on donkeys. 200 loaves of bread. Check. Five sheep. Check. One bushel of cooked grain. Check. 100 cakes of raisins and 200 cakes of figs. Check and check. Well, you go on ahead, I'll follow. The donkeys loaded with good food started down the mountain. Abigail got on her donkey and followed. From the valley, David and his men were approaching. Everything we've done has been worthless. I watched over this fellow's property, but he's paid me back evil for good. We'll wipe him out. <laughs> As David's anger grew though, he spotted something along the path. A pack of donkeys. What's this? Well, it looks like they're carrying something. Food for a feast, I'd say. Behind the pack of donkeys, Abigail prepared for what lay ahead. I must stop this. The moment Abigail saw David, she slid off her donkey and fell face down on the ground before his feet. Please, let me speak. Let me take the blame for Nabal's actions. Abigail raised her eyes just enough to notice David's surprised face. He nodded. Don't pay attention to Nabal. He's always doing foolish things. I'm sorry I didn't get to see your messengers, but I've brought a gift for you. Right now, the Lord has kept you from killing Nabal and his men. Let the Lord deal with your enemies. Abigail rose to her feet. David and his men listened, surprised by the strength of her message. You fight the Lord's battle, so he will give your family line a kingdom that will last. He'll make you ruler of Israel. 
And when he does, you won't have a heavy load on your mind about killing people with no reason. The Lord will give you success. When that happens, please remember me. Abigail took a deep breath and waited. David smiled. Give praise to the Lord. He sent you to find me. May he bless you for this. You have kept me from using my own hands to get even. David's men unloaded the food that Abigail had brought. Go home in peace. I'll do what you have asked. Abigail made her way back up the hillside to her home. She had chosen to humble herself and do the hard yet creative work of making peace. In the end, Nabal paid the high price for his foolish anger, but God blessed Abigail.